starting quarterback? I have no clue. And I'm okay with having no clue on that either. <laughs> Put up a goose egg the other day. Put uh, up a goose egg. What you saw there? Yeah, please. There, uh, we played hard. Uh, we played smart. You know, uh, had some key stops there. You know, the one thing I think we still need to improve on is turnovers, creating turnovers. You know, we had one on the ground that we didn't get, and it's still hard to believe we, uh, you know, we didn't get that one because we had it. <laughs> it seemed like. Uh, four guys there to get the ball, but we didn't get it. But yeah, you know, we haven't hit our mark yet. Uh, our goal is three, and we haven't hit that in the game, so. I mean, those are weird, because, you know, sometimes it's just luck, and a ball, you know, a fumble comes out and goes to the right version or whatever. It, right. It, I mean, do you kind of expect some ebb and flow? Last year, you guys got a ton of them, or, or do you, you know, go out there expecting you, you should be able to get those every game? I'm greedy, so <laughs> I always think that you should be able to get them. Uh, to me, you it's it's not about getting getting them, but you have to create turnovers, I believe. So we need to strip the ball more, uh, cause fumbles. Uh, you know, if we get our hands on the ball right, we got to catch it. Uh, it's been a few uh, drops this year we had where we had our hands on the ball and we didn't actually finish the play. So if there's one area that I think that we can improve on is that. Uh, obviously, the last week, um, Bungaloo was getting the quarterback getting out of, out of the pocket, making plays downfield, and uh, didn't really have any instance of that against Idaho State. Obviously, encouraged to see stuff like that corrected. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really wasn't his style. Right. Uh, you know, the Kenny, uh, they went more to a uh, quick game, mm -hmm. and so you saw a lot more slants, a lot more outs, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that wasn't his style to get out of the pocket as much. Uh, how about, um, in that note, tackling and whatnot, I mean, especially Dante, it seemed like they kind of tried to attack, attack him a little bit early in that, that quick game, but uh, pretty solid in terms of tackling and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, you know, he can tackle. I mean, he's, in, and to me, it's about uh, wanting to tackle. You know, so he's a guy that, I mean, He'll, I mean, if it's a fullback, he'll tackle a fullback. If it's a receiver, it's a receiver. So he's a guy that uh, he is a good open field tackle for us. With a guy on the other side of the field, Jonathan Moxie, we talked about him a little bit last week, but um, he's, he's, he's having a pretty good season so far and I mean, pretty much includes everything, defending the deep ball, all of it. What, what, where has he really grown, I guess, from you know over, over these last couple of years? I would say his technique and his eyes. I think, uh, you know, and then just uh, – uh, you know, he's been a year older, you know, so now he understands the game. I think uh, he plays with, I mean, his, you know, his feet and his hips to me are a, uh, uh, a ton better. And then his eyes, he has his eyes in the right place instead of, uh, you know, at cornerback, you can't peek. And, you know, he was a guy that used to peek a little bit, and uh, he's not as much. It seems like a guy, too, that uh, I know he got the penalty for talking the other day, but he does seem like that's a little part of his game, was his confidence and swagger, that type of thing. I know you have a lot of guys on defense like that, but what, what in that point, is, is he a guy that uh, doesn't mind talking a little or being, you know, kind of being confident in himself and his abilities? I mean, yeah, you can talk, but it's a way to do it, yeah. you know, and you don't want to talk to a uh, <laughs> official, you know, we're in a red zone and we're, uh, you know, we're finna, I mean, uh, you know, we just stopped him. You know, no matter what he, to me on on that play, he had just made the play. All right, so just let the play go, you know, and this uh, bounce back. But you know, to me, he's just a kid that you know he's uh, he played a lot last year early in the season. Uh, he started off with a rough start, and then as the season kept going, he got better and better and better, and now he's playing well. You know, but at that position, I mean, let's be honest, I mean. You really can't take a, a down off or a snap off. You know, he he can be playing great now, and then he can have a bad game, just one game, and then he can, you know, it's kind of like being a uh, a kicker. Uh, you know, you had that one that one bad player, that one bad game, and you know, where's his head at? And so he's a guy that uh, he's doing everything we're asking him to do. You, uh, you know, we talk so much about the depth on the defensive line and the hearts of the days. Lost McNair for four weeks. Gabe Perez is redshirting. How, how much is your depth at end kind of taking a hit the, the last few weeks? That depth is decreasing. So, uh, 
you know, it's, it's a it's a physical game, and you're going to lose people. And uh, I'm one that I never look at any position as we have enough depth uh, because you know you're going to have injuries. And so, you know, but our deal is uh, with those injuries, there has to be somebody that's, uh, you know, who, 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 who is just as good as the guy we lose. Just kind of uh, looking at Virginia, what, what, what's the biggest challenge that they're going to pose to your defense? They're big, they're physical, they're athletic. Uh, they have three or four running backs. They have two, they have two or three tight ends. They have receivers that are big. I mean, this is a good, uh, you know, a good football team. You know, so many people, I think, you know, they look at the wins and the, and, and the, uh, and the L's, but I don't look at that. I look at film. I study film, and what I see on film is a football team that looks good, and they play pretty good, also. When you look at the film and you see the, the two games against the, the you know the big boys, and then you see a game like yes, yesterday, I guess, uh, where they struggled a little bit. How, how do you kind of evaluate the film when you're looking at the talent they're they're playing against, and, and how that you, you kind of weigh things? You know what? I don't think you. I don't think you look at the talent. I think you look at, you know, like every game. If you look at every football game. There's three to four plays in there that if either team makes that play, it can change the outcome of a, of a game. And so there were plays that they they had that they just didn't hit against, uh, you know, the team they played. And uh, you know, the same thing for us. I mean, and it, you know, as far as the game we lost, there's certain plays that if we make, all right, it's a whole, uh, you know, it's a, uh, hopefully it's different. Uh, I'll come in the game, but you know they're they're uh, they play a lot of different guys on their offense. I mean a lot, and they look very good as well. You were three games in. Where can you assess your team right now? Even with pitching a shutout with Idaho State, with seeing how your guys are. I don't know yet because we haven't won a game on the road, and so to me, I can't say we've we've uh, arrived because we still haven't won on the road. So to me. Uh, this is a big game for us, you know. I mean, it'll be, you know, it'll be, it'll be, probably, you know, a a game, uh, Friday night game, and so, you know, to me, we need to see where exactly we're at as far as, you know, on the road, and on the road. Coach Ellison said he saw a lot of similarities with UVA's offense as he sees it. This team's offense. Right. Shift emotions. Does that make it a little easier yep. for you? Uh, I don't know if it makes it easier. Us. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's a lot. I mean, they use, I mean, their personnel groups. I mean, they have every personnel group in the book. You know, and they and they uh, they they use a lot of players. You know, with those groups, and so uh, for us, it's going to be tough because we have to. You only have so much time in a day. And you know you're on the field, so we have to have uh, have to have all those looks. And you know if we can't get them on the field, then we got to have it in the film room and all that type of stuff. So yeah, it's, it'll be a challenge for us this week. Along those lines, they, they throw the ball to a lot of different people, including the running back. Uh, you know, how would you kind of describe their passing attack and sort of the options that they've got? Play action pass. You know, uh, they'll take shots. You know, they'll run the ball. Uh, they'll be in. Like I said, they'll be in certain groups, and they're not in that. They'll be in certain personnel groups, and they may not line up in that actual group that you think that they're going to be in. Um, so, say for instance, it can be two backs, you know, and it could be uh, um, a tight end, and they may be in a, uh, a you know, a ten personnel set. So they're very, they're like our offense. They do a lot, you know, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to trying to uh, trying to make you think a lot, you know, on defense. You watch film of, you know, after the game of your, your team, when you, when you turn the page to the next opponent and you put on, what, what's the first thing, when you put in the film, what's the first play you watch or the first, how do you start watching film of the opponent? Is there certain things or you just watch, uh, what's kind of your, how do you kind of go about it? Uh, it always starts with the run game. You know, up front. You know, if they're big and strong, and if they're, I mean, if they're big and strong and they can move people, then uh, we have to stop the run. And then I look at the, uh, 
the quarterback. You know, what throws he can make, uh, what throws he can't make. You know, is does he have a certain guy that he likes to throw the ball to? Um, and you know, that's pretty much it. I mean, when, when you, I assume it's cut up already when you get it, but I mean, is are you watching just every play in a row or all their passing plays or all their plays? In it varies. It varies. I might watch a game to start with. Uh, uh, I might watch a certain, you know, personnel group. You know, I might watch all runs first. I might watch all passes. So, yeah, that kind of varies a little bit according to the week. And do you grab, uh, last thing on this, do you have the stats or their names first, or do you just watch and say, okay, that's the guy I need to look at? Or how do you? I have their names. Okay. I have their names and I have the stats. So now I can put, uh, I can see who's doing what. You know, I like to know their size and how, you know, how it's built and all that, and, and then see how we kind of fit uh, against those guys. You guys uh, broke out Durant Miles the other day, and you know, pretty quick uh, coming back off permission for him. What did you see for him that wanted to get him involved? Like I said, with injuries, right, we had to get him involved, okay. and so, um, so you know, he was eager to play as well. You know, and he's a smart kid. Um, he works hard, and so he's rolling. Get back to Monty really quick. Uh, how much of his development? I don't know how much you leaned on your corners. How much of what? Uh, how much has his development helped you do what, what you want to do on defense? Well, yeah, he's been able to hold up out there uh, a lot, which helps you out. Helps me out as far as my play calling. You know, once again. But I got keep saying when you're a corner and you're out there on the island. I mean, to me, he's matured. You know, upstairs. You know, his mental game. I think is is. Is on is 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 exactly where it needs to be. You mentioned, oh, oh, you mentioned Miles. Two more. Go ahead. I was going to ask you about the Conway. I, I mean, I know his his talent level is obviously important to the defense, but it seems like he's kind of. I could be wrong here, but maybe dropping into coverage and doing doing even a little bit more this season. How, how important is is his role and kind of what what you do as well in terms of play calling and stuff? We move him around. Uh, you know, so he's been to the field a little bit. He's to the boundary. He's been rushing. We've been dropping him. So he's a guy that uh, he fits into everything we do. And, uh, you know, we like to have him in certain spots uh, because he is a guy that can make plays for us. It's not very often you get a, a game of that score where you're able to get some other guys in there. And he mentioned Miles. I think you guys had, as a team, had 13 guys that made their debuts. Uh, right. What's that do for guys like Horton and Ford and some of these guys that don't, you know, some of the linebackers that, and that, that they're able to get some, some playing time and, and get a taste of it, you know, I guess from a mental standpoint, confidence, you know, what, the, what does that do for him? It's him? great for him, uh, you know, to, to play, uh, uh, for us to get him on film and be able to actually, you know, see him out there playing. The one thing when you have a, uh, a lead like that, usually what happens is when you start subbing, you usually see a, uh, a drop off. And to me, I didn't see that. And so for me to have those guys out there playing, and playing that hard and playing that fast was was uh, was I mean it was good to see. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Phil. You had them like left early with the end of the second quarter there. Had you like to come.